I'm CK. Tonight we're going to be building something. I have a bag from thonk.co.uk that's not labeled on the outside and as usual I forget what I bought because I buy so many kits. You know better than I do because you've seen the title screen. So let's open this bag, see what's inside, and hope we have fun with it. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's open the bag and see what I bought. Okay, it is a... Look, Mom, no computer performance VCO. I remember buying this now. Uh, from thonk.co.uk, uh, as is typical. This is dated September 2022, so it's relatively recent. Here's a QR code for the build guide. We'll look that up later. Let's see what else we have in here. There's the panel and the performance uh, and the PCB. Nothing else in the bag. I can recycle the bag because it's paper. Then we've got two stickers, which are knobs. I guess that's Look Mom No Computers thing. I'll put that on the sticker wall. Now let's see what's in here. Let's take a look at the front panel and the circuit board. Okay, we'll look at the front panel first. Ah. And as usual, I can't open a freaking bag because I'm an idiot. Okay, it's two-sided. Look, Mom, no computer. Some LEDs here. Uh, a something here. I don't know what goes there. It's probably a pot, another LED, another pot. Pulse width. Uh, that's probably tuning, but I'm not sure. Or modulation or sync. No, I'm sorry. That's probably tuning. Modulation, sync, uh, pulse width, and uh, Note CV, come in here, and then here's the output, which is a square wave, a ramp, and a triangle, and CV in. So I'm not sure if these are jacks or pots. We'll see. And on the back, it says, oscillate the hip bones at 3 kilohertz, couple of smileys, Cosmo, today I bought a hundred tins of beans in case of supply issues. And there's one zoo battle zoo. So that's kind of fun. Now let's look at the circuit board itself. Maybe I can get this bag open like a normal human. Yes, I did. More doodles on the board, that's fun. It's got some surface mount components already pre-installed. Processor, I mean a, uh, I think that's an op amp. Let me see if I can read it. I cannot read it. Little microprocessor, some resistors and capacitors scattered around the board. Transistor there, or voltage regulator, I don't know which. Oh, and we do have one surface mount component that has not been, uh, pre-soldered for us. It's uh, AS3340D. I've used that before. And then here we've got the front panel. And yeah, okay, these are all jacks. One volt prox. Those are all input jacks. Oh, and here's where the power connector goes. Pot, 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 pot. Trimmers. That's interesting. Three trimmers for 100k center, 10k track, uh, for tracking CV, note CV, 20k high frequency track, I don't know what that is, and 100k reference, and a regular old transistor there. And again, I'm looking at this and seeing, oh, okay, these are not LEDs. These you can, uh, get to the trimmers through the front panel. That's interesting. People normally, you just set trimmers and go. Oh, and also there's another 
long strip here. I bet that's one of a uh, daughter board of some kind or other. Up, oh, and here is another mini board. Not sure what this is. It's got a plus sign in the center, and it's got one through six, and that will go on uh, this place here, either probably this way. Oh, and it's, it's cut from a series of multiples on one board, so it's got a rough edge that I'm just going to use a little sandpaper and sand that off. You don't have to do that, of course. I like to do that just because I like smooth edges on my boards. So those are the boards and the front panel. Now let's look at the bits in the bag to see what else we're going to be putting together here. Here's another fun, fun, funky mod. Another sticker. Put them up on my wall. Yep, and yet another sticker. Look, Mom, no computer. So we've got four stickers so far. Uh, some trimmers. This is the surface mount chip and an LM4040. Another trimmer. I believe this is what goes on that little, this rotary switch will go on this little board. Let's see how tight that is. It's pretty tight. Let me put those over there. Keep the bag so we don't lose our build doc reference. And yeah, here's a little little daughter board I was talking about. I don't know what type this one is. I can't keep up with all the small daughter boards as a digital display, which will be viewable through there. Some cheapo pots. Nuts and washers. Jacks and the nuts are all on and I'll unscrew those off camera. A couple of more pots. I'm going to put all the... Huh, look. Don't have many components to solder on. Ooh, these are good knobs. Nice metal inserts. Metal lock screws. No, that, that, those are some good knobs. I like those. And some LEDs. And that's it. So I think the most challenging part will be to put the 3340 on the board because it's surface mount, but that's not too tough now, is it? So that's it. That's all that's in the kit. So let me get the soldering iron heated up and we'll get this thing put together. And they do have a build guide and it's a pretty good one, lots of good pictures. Uh, I haven't gone all the way to the end to see uh, all the details yet. Oh, and I forgot to say, I mentioned the part numbers. So the uh, 3340 is an oscillator and the 4040 is a voltage ref. So that's going to keep this, uh, I assume, based on a lot, uh, that that's going to keep the tuning from moving very much, so it'll be a very stable oscillator. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the oscillator chip on the board. Interesting that they chose not to put that one on. Oh, they've got this all taped up, so it's harder for me to tell. Oh, and there's a transistor. That's the 4040. Uh, it's interesting that they chose not to do that one. So for surface mount, we're going to be using my thinnest solder that I'm comfortable using. 
the 0 0.025 inch from MG Chemical in Canada. There's probably a U.S. manufacturer or your local country manufacturer. Also, I just have never, I found the MG and very happy with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little solder on this pad. That will be our lockdown pad. Then I'm going to try and get this out. This is all, and they've even wrapped it with tape. This is going to be a little bit of a pain. There we go. Now the next thing you need for good surface mount is a good pair of tweezers. Now you'll see on the circuit board there is a dot and the corresponding dot on the oscillator chip. I hope I don't get my head in the shot too much. I usually do when I'm doing surface mount. So we'll move the chip onto its pads so it's evenly spaced and all the pins are on a pad correctly. Now I'll get my soldering iron and reheat that little solder we had. You might have seen the chip sank right down onto the board. So now it is in place and if I'm reasonably careful I won't nudge it away and part of that care is I'm going to solder the opposite side from where I just put the lockdown solder bead so I don't disturb it. Now one thing that we will want to be very careful about here is you'll see there's a capacitor and a resistor here that we certainly don't want to touch with our soldering iron. Uh, I'm not going to use any additional flux on this. I don't think I need to. The pins are far enough spaced apart that I shouldn't get solder bleed. See, I'm putting the soldering arm between the pins. Wow, I put way too much on there. I'm going to get some of my chip quick flux and just dump it on here. There we go. A little bit of flux went down to the solder resist on the board and the solder went away and both legs are solder. Okay, that's it, all of it. Let me double check the solder lines. They all look good. So that's that. Okay, that's blah, 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 blah. Okay, now we're diving right into going ahead and putting the power connector on. Oh, one thing you might have noticed, or you might notice if you watch enough of my videos, uh, sometimes if I'm soldering, you'll see my hand go out of frame and then back in pretty quickly. Well, that's because I have a bad habit of flicking excess solder off onto the floor. I've just been doing that my whole life. If you ever have the very unlikely chance of sharing a lab space with me, do not sit to my right. Because if you do, you get little so hot solder flying at you all day long that you have to dodge. But again, I think that's an unlikely eventuality, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, the power connector is a keyed type, which is good, and the circuit board has 
a good silkscreen outline of the connector, and we'll just verify that, even though I'm verifying it after I uh, put it on, but the red stripe should be down this way, and with the key set the right way, it is, so that's good. And now we're just going to... And this is not that complex a build, is it? It's not quite as straightforward as the last couple I've done, but it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Now we're going to put legs on this, and I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's cereal chip. USB to cereal. So that supports uh, this USB connector that we will not be using because I don't anticipate ever programming this board or anything silly like that. Now, let's see where how it goes. It goes with the USB connector facing yonder towards this set of eight resistors. Just making sure that, yep, we've got the right orientation, and that's why. Pictures are so useful in build guides. So now that it's all assembled, we can just zap the pins together and we don't have to worry about alignment or anything like that. Because they are all in their final position. Flip the board over and do the other pins. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that yet. I could. Because I obviously, I have to solder the pot connectors there. And I could pull this out later. Let me see. I think... I'm debating with myself how I want to do this. So what I'm going to do, because I'm the adventurous type, is I'm going to go ahead and put this pot on and then just solder this down. I think that's the best compromise in the way I want to do this. He probably says do it a different way. He probably wants to separate the, pull the, eight, pull the daughter board out and then do this, but I don't want to do that. I'll just clip this in here. Gosh, these holes are awful small for these pins. So this is a little out of sequence from what we typically do. Now we'll do this again. Again, USB connector towards those that resistor bank. Uh, there's two more legs that I'll do here, but they'll be easy to solder for there. And that's the daughter board mounted on. All fine and dandy. Uh, let's see what else we want to do. Now we want to put the... Oh, this is an Arduino. Okay. Uh, now we're going to put the voltage regulator on. Is it? And it is. It goes right here. And of course, there's a flat spot on it, and you want it to be matching the flat spot on. I'm going to just flip this over and use my whole side now that I've got that pot in there. Uh, you want to make sure you get the flat side to the flat side, or else things will be bad. Yeah, I don't know much about Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, and so on. I spent the last 40 years programming personal computers. I don't want to step back to programming little bitty cards, so I haven't ever looked at it. Now we're going to do the rotary switch. And we'll t look at the rotary switch, and it's got a little locking tab or alignment tab that we'll want to clip off. 
per the instructions. And this is a plastic body, so I don't need my carbide tipped cutters today. I'm looking to see when we're going to do this part. Oh, I see what we're going to do. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we're going to put jacks on and then we're going to put jacks on here and then mount this here. Put the boards together like so and then drop this on it. So it's going to be quite a little process. And again, that's uh, significantly different than what we do with other boards. And since we're going to put all the jacks and so on on, I'm going to pause the cameras because I've got to take the panel nuts off the jacks. And you don't want to see me do that. Now let's get this rotary switch on. That's going to be the hardest or most challenging part of this. So what we want to do is we want to put all the jacks and pots on the board, not soldered yet, except for the one I already soldered. Because uh, I didn't want to deal with that later. Gosh, these holes are kind of tight. That's nice because that means the jacks aren't going anywhere. And we put the little header in there like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the rotary switch. First we're going to put the panel on, making sure all the various uh, components, the pots and the knobs and so on, are all aligned like so. And we'll put on one. Sorry, I'm dropping my LEDs, I'm not putting those on quite yet. Because I still have to solder that kind of pin header thing. So we're going to put the rotary switch through and then try and find the right nut for that. Be this big one. And yes, once again, I am not using the washer behind the nut because I don't care. Now, the next step is we're going to rotate this around so that the index pin is away facing away from this line of connectors. Then we take this little board, oops, and we drop a washer. Take this little board and we put it on the pins, which is a little fiddly. But there that goes. Now we can swing it around exactly to the point we want it to be. And we want it kind of flat on the board like that. No gap. And how does he describe it? Base of the rotary shirt should be sitting just above the main PCB and the small PCB should be flush to the main. And that's pretty much what we've got even though I don't have the I don't have the other pins on this pin header through it yet. I'm not comfortable with this. Because what we're going to do right now is we're going to solder this all together, but we're not going to be soldering 
pin header to the main board, we're only going to be soldering it to the little daughter board there, and it's only like friction fitting. to make contact, and I don't like that. I really don't like that, because that's just begging for incomplete contact. So I'm actually, I'm going off script here, folks, but I just don't like the way this is going to work. Uh, it doesn't make me feel confident in a friction fit does, means that you could get some corrosion, you could get uh, just a little wiggle in there, and you wouldn't be getting a connection. And I'm not a fan of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solder it before I put that rotary switch in. And it will leave it, it'll be, a, it'll make the little daughter board a little high. But I'd rather have it a little high than not have a good connection. May also make it harder to put the daughter board and switch on, but again, I'm sorry, I I don't see that as being electrically sound. Yeah, see, now that's not going to be flush, but I don't think I care. I think I care more about having good electrical contact than I care about the switch being in exactly the right distance, because uh, it doesn't, that really doesn't matter. There's plenty of threads on the front of the nut, so it's not going anywhere. Actually, see, this is dumb. I'm sorry, his, his way of doing this is not to my taste. I'm going to take the panel off. Put the rotary switch, little daughter board there, and like that. that set up like that. Now I'll put the panel back on to get the spacing we want. Keeping my thumb back here to make sure nothing goes wacky. that I did solder in place to keep the boards together. Now nothing's going to move and that's all good and I can solder the all the pins. But now it's all soldered up fine. Let me put the big knob on it and just make sure it turns well. Yeah, 
Yeah, that turns fine. Take that knob back off. And now, with all the other stuff on, we can solder all the connections. Now again, when you're doing this, be very careful because there are surface mount resistors and capacitors scattered all around, some of them very near the pins, and you don't want to brush them with your soldering iron or you'll kick them loose uh, and you may not notice it, so just be very careful. Okay, my water heater came on, so it's making a little bit of noise. So what I'm going to be doing next is putting the three trimmers on. He wanted to do this in multiple steps, but I'm not going to be taking the front panel on and off two more times to do this. I'm just going to do the three trimmers, the three LEDs, and the display, and we're going to push the display forward. He recommends having the display uh, flush against the front board. So we'll do that by pushing it forward when the things are together. And when we put the trimmers on, you can see there's an indicator here where the threads go, where the adjusting screw goes. Okay, my water heater's off, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit because that was probably pretty fiddly. So, the set screws on the trim pots are actually go through the front panel. It's not recessed, you're not reaching through, it goes through those holes, and that's this one, this one, this one, and this one. So you have to get it all aligned so it goes in. Uh, what I recommend, having done it now, is you hold the board like this and jigger around the pots around with uh, a screwdriver, pointy thing, whatever you want to use, pokey thing, whatever you want to use, uh, to make sure they all get through. Once they all get through, the circuit board will be at the proper distance from the front panel. See, that's perfect now. And then you can go ahead and solder it. It's a little fiddly, uh, but don't get frustrated. Uh, they do go through, and as you can see, they rotate fine. There's not any particular amount of friction in there, so it'll be fine. Uh, same with the LEDs, and of course, when you lay the digital dis display flat against the front panel, you've got about two, maybe three millimeters of the base being away from the circuit board. So you want to do that with it face down also. Now I'll finish soldering up all these connections. I'm going to put the rest of the panel nuts on, and we'll do that again in fast motion. Next, we're going to put the knobs on, and this gets a little brass sleeve, which dropped into my... Gets a little black brass sleeve for the lock nut, or lock, uh, locking screw to connect to. power cable on, and again it's a keyed connector, so as long as you've put the connector on the board right you can't get that wrong. And there it is. There's the front. There's 
the side, the back, the other side, the top, and the bottom. Now we'll put it in the rack and see how it sounds. We're not in the rack yet because uh, I looked at the calibration steps and I can do them all on the bench top and I'd prefer to do that. So we'll plug this in. We've got lights. And can we adjust? There's an A, B, C. Okay, the range is a little, the center range is a little funky and we certainly don't have the track right. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have four volts at this test point right here. Let me find a good ground. Well, it says one volt. That's not right. But let me trim it up and see what we get. I'll trim it up quite a bit. One point four. Oh, I got my leads backwards. Doesn't matter, but just don't need to see the minus sign. way up. I went the wrong way. And as I'm doing this, you can't see it, but the note value is, of course, changing as I'm changing the voltage reference in here. Three point five. Oh, by the way, for a ground reference, I'm using a ground pin on one of the jacks, just so you know. And there's four oh two. That's going to be close enough for me, guys. So that is. The voltage reference, because every th all the tuning runs off that, so that's what we're looking at. Now I'm gonna set the center knob to say, let's go to. Oops. Oh, I know what I keep doing. Uh, this keeps resetting, and the reason why it keeps resetting is because there's a reset button on the Arduino and I keep pressing that against the ground. So why don't I get my solder pad and put that in one of the handy dandy holes so I don't do that again. So there's C, let's get right onto a C. Okay, there's a C and if I octave up that's still C, but C it's not green C. I didn't take this to green there. That's green C, octave up, it's a little bit high so we'll go to the center one to track, trim that down. Now that's green. I'm not sure you can see those LEDs. Yes, you can. Now we'll go next octave up, and that's green C. A lid, just a hair, just a little hair to the sharp side. Now we'll take that there. Next up. Still a little bit more 
to the sharp side. Oop, no, that went flat a little bit, didn't it? So it's fluttering a little bit, but that octave's there very well. Octave is still set there. I'm going to go a little higher on the track there, there. A little higher again. And if you've ever calibrated, you know this is this can be a fussy procedure. I'm going to take the high frequency down. This is fluttering all over the place. I'm going to take the high down a little bit. So that's going to flutter a little bit. Okay, I'm going to be settling with that for what we've got calibrated here. I may do it more. This is something you can do in the rack, obviously. So if you're on a particular stage or different environmental conditions or a different power supply, you can mess with that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the center here. And that's a D, and I don't really want it to be a D. So I'm going to pull it back to... C. Now it should track to G on that side and G on that side. So good. We're centered and we're calibrated. Uh, again, the key thing on calibration is setting this reference at 4 volts because that drives all the other tuning. And then again, if you get a little bit low and you want to adjust track on the fly, uh, you certainly can. But it's all, I don't know how sensitive those are. I don't know how many cents off from, uh, fine, from actual tune it is. Now we'll put it in the rack and see how it sounds. Now let's see how it sounds. Don't fret about the... if it's a little out of tune. It's 58 degrees in my studio. Why is this... 58 degrees Fahrenheit in my studio, so it might be a little chill and it hasn't had a chance to warm up yet, as you notice. So let's play a C. So that's one sound. That's with the pulse width. Take the pulse width all the way down. And this is the square wave I'm coming out. I'm sorry, I should have said that right up front. Now let's try the ramp. Now we'll try the triangle wave. That's almost round enough to be a sine wave, but it's not. Change the octave. Change the octave again. I'm going to take it one more time. Okay, all the way down now. Now we'll do some mods. We'll put uh, a sine wave into pulse width. You can hear it a little bit, can't you? A little vibrato in there. Pulse width up here. Now you can hear it pretty strongly, of course. Now we'll plug into frequency modulation.
So that's about what one would expect. I'm not sure what this CV is. I think this, oh, that CV is in to the tune into this knob. So we can flutter the frequency. Okay, I'm going to do one other thing here just for my own interest. And I'm not going to unplug it from the sound output because that would be dumb. Let me go back to set this at a steady. Trying to get it to a steady C. That's close enough. It's oscillating between one end and the other. And I'm going to get my phone tuner out. If I can find it. I may cut while I'm trying to find this. There it is. So here's the tuner, and here's the C. So that's looking like it wasn't, that's looking like it was coming in at C. I think the device is, the chip's heating up. There we go. C sharp and C sharp. That makes sense. Yep. A little bit sharp as we can see by the light. I can tune it down a little bit. And there's right on C. And we'll go all the way up. A little sharp. That's not bad. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I'm going to do one more thing. We're going to plug it into the sequencer and take the gate. Okay, let's see how she sounds sequenced. Add a little frequency modulation. Actually, I've got a pulse width. See how fast we can go. So that's it. A competent uh, VCO. Nice to be able to do all your trimming if you need to right from the front because uh, if you need to tune to another uh, accompanying instrument or whatever not having to go around to the back to adjust everything is a very good thing. And a relatively straightforward build. This switch as you saw was a little bit of a pain but 
just take it slow. And again, I'm not sure he didn't want that pin header soldered in. Uh, I personally recommend you do that just because a simple metal to metal co contact isn't, it's failure prone. So, but that's just my opinion. You can do whatever you want to do, of course. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.